the next two days and nights, we're going to spend aboard the catamaran. We are taking a catamaran class and hopefully by the end, we will feel confident enough to get our own catamaran. We are the McKays. We plan on traveling to a hundred islands with our niece, but... But we don't have a boat yet. In our ASA 114 catamaran class, Captain Craig immediately started teaching us. And then we headed out to the catamaran. <laughs> I wonder where Hiram gets it. <laughs> now, if any of you don't know what a catamaran is, it means that they have two hulls and that the main part of the boat is actually spanning both of the hulls, so you have a lot of living space. It's practically twice as much living space as a mono hull, which only has one hull, obviously. Mono hull. What's the first thing that you notice about a catamaran? What's one of the big differences between a catamaran and a mono hull? A lot of space. A whole lot of space. We had to read a book in order to prepare for the class. Because of the buoyancy of, of a catamaran, the joke that you might hear is, well, would you rather be in a monohole at the bottom of the ocean or in a catamaran upside down on the top? So most people would prefer to be up, upside, uh, uh, up, up on the surface. Okay. Right here. By the way, what is this that I'm standing on? The trampoline. I do not put it in the water. So that's something to hold. What are these right here, Cole? Check. Lazy Jack. Lazy Jack. Yeah, we'll check it every time. Before. Okay. Again, look at, notice again how clean the engine looks. Because catamarans have two hulls, they have two engines and two of practically everything. Right? Here's, here's my starboard engine. Here's my port engine. This is keeping both the rudders in sync, eh? So after a morning of instruction, we are headed to lunch. The restaurant's closed, so we just had to gather up whatever we could find, which are these. Never tried them. Hopefully they're good. No. One thing that we found from being here for so long is that boat people are the nicest people ever. <laughs> Welcome to the Odog Yacht Club. Here is Odok. This is our kitchen area. We have all of our um, oops, 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 all of our stuff in here, communal area, and then over here we have our ceiling fans. None of which any of this has the marina provided. And we've got our refrigerator, dry storage. So the refrigerator, and then. Oh, ice cream tonight. I believe there's ice cream. And then this is dry storage for all of the. This is because during a recent storm, we lost this refrigerator, so we turned it into dry storage. So, anyways. <laughs> and then we have our TV, which survived everything. But the and then is still not freezing ice cream. It's not freezing good. And then all of this rolls up. And then we have. This is only for the cold. Don't video that. We're not supposed to have that in here. Um, but anyways, this is the Odok Yacht Club. It's wonderful. Some people had even built their own boats. Like this man that we had met who built this all by himself. The keel by itself weighs 32,000 pounds empty and it's also the fuel tank it has 12 tons of concrete in it. How long did it take you to build this boat? Eight years. So you can get down in there if you dare to go. Oh, I dare. You did. Well, you know, we heard that boating was fixing your boat in exotic locations. And then it was back to sailing lessons. Security, security.
Securite Securite. This is Cruising Catamaran Reality Check. I'm a 40 foot catamaran with a 22 foot beam presently leaving the Waterford Marina for all concerned traffic. Reality Check standing by in 16. There we go. We are a fairly large vessel, so if there's another large vessel, we would like to communicate that ahead of time so that we don't have to get up here and jockey for position. The channel here is so narrow because they only dredged a certain amount. So of course you'd have to do a security. Like I, I was like, isn't channel 16, 16 sacred? Why would you do a security? But yeah, there's not enough room for another catamaran in this channel. Craig is putting all of the students at the helm and having us turn and maneuver the catamaran and it's huge and so it's a little intimidating. Up on that corner? Yep. I've been told that's Beyonce's house. Let's head towards that. Now, Sounds good. Sorry to say she has not had me over for lunch yet, so I cannot confirm that's her house. But the moment she does, you'll be the first. Uh, you'll be the first that I let know. Cindy, do you want to uh, give us a, a, a summary of what you're about to do? Um. Well, hopefully, I'll be able to uh, make the boat turn with the the wheel, but then I'll be able to make the boat turn with the motors. That's a plan, right? Excellent. Because uh, catamarans have two hulls, they want to go straight, and which could be a problem if you want to turn. But they also have two motors, and so you can put one in reverse and one forward, which means you can actually turn faster. So, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to turn, and sometimes it's easier to turn in a catamaran. This is Lindy's first time at the helm on a catamaran. And uh, I'm not worried though, because she has a 100% success record of not grounding or hitting or crashing catamarans. Because this is my first time. Well, Captain Craig had faith in me. One of the great things about coming here during the off season, even though it's cold, our class size has been so small. In the, all the other classes, there's only been three students, so Dustin, me, and one other person. But in the catamaran class, we've had five students, three other people besides Dustin and I. But hey, I mean, honestly, it's almost as good as having the instructor all to ourselves. It's been really nice. Right now we are trying to figure out how to pick up a mooring ball, which is pretty important because catamarans often don't even fit in marinas, so you need to go to a mooring ball. Good thing to learn. That rope right there will foul the anchor, just like any other one. Okay, revert, put us in reverse, slow it down. There you go, let's back it up. Now we're gonna put down the anchor. We have our anchor locker. You want to keep your fingers and any body parts that you wish to keep away from that winch and chain. Put us in reverse and get our momentum going backwards. So look, you notice the bridle is But we're not going to actually dock, we're just going to get close to it so that we feel good about getting close to big objects in a big boat. And then once you get comfortable with it, then what? Then you can dock the boat. Then I can dock, yeah. Something like that. Okay. Birds of wisdom. This is a really big boat, but I can do it because I can do things that are Tricky, right? Absolutely. It's all about self confidence. Absolutely. The next thing that we need to practice is backing into a dock. Not actually into the dock, but close to Thank the you dock. For that clarification. <laughs> <laughs> And 
that's it. We're done for the day and we're heading back to the dock. After spending an entire day learning how to sail a catamaran, we decided we need to see what other catamarans look like, and we found some catamarans for sale that we could take a tour of. We're not ready to buy a boat of our own yet, but we are going boat hunting regardless because we want to see all the different kinds of catamarans and get a feel for what it would be like to live in them for a year. advantage of all the space that a catamaran offers whereas um, some older boats it's just all like sloping deck and how what how can you take advantage of a sloping deck so I like this boat it's very pretty we are done with our first day of catamaran class and now we are headed to Mardi Gras, except for I don't think Craig is going to go to Mardi Gras. He's going to go pine about his wife. He's talking about his wife <laughs> all the time during all the classes. He's like, my wife says this and my wife says that and I just love her so much. It's so cute. We are headed to a Mardi Gras parade, boat parade. I don't know. I've never lived in a place that celebrated Mardi Gras, so I'm not sure what I am heading to, but I'm excited because I have this. So I wear a fedora all the time normally and it's no big deal, that's just what I do all the time. But today, for some reason, people keep coming up to me and commenting on my fedora. I can't figure out why. in from Canada, we knew that we could choose pretty much anywhere in the United States to go to sailing school. So why did we choose this random place in Texas? Well, first of all, I wanted to go to Florida. It's a lot warmer. Granted, I didn't think it would be this cold in Texas because it's pretty cold. But first of all, we wanted to go to Florida. And the reason that we didn't go to Florida is because it seemed like most of the places that we called had, um, they were either way too expensive. Like for for each of my, me and my husband to go, it would have been like between 10,000 to 20,000 each to go to all the classes that we went here. A lot of other places didn't have a catamaran and so we wouldn't be able to take catamaran class. Um, some places were really cheap, but mm, kind of sketchy about like 
how much instruction time you would actually get. It was kind of like, you know, seemed like a fisherman and on his, on his uh, extra time he did ASA classes. Uh, also, there were other people who said, oh, there's no way that you would be able to pass all of those classes within ch such a short time period. You, there's no way that you could handle that. So I stopped looking in Florida and I also looked in California and I even called the BBIs and I just couldn't find any place. So then I said, what about Texas? Texas is near water. There's a Gulf of Mexico right there. So I started calling Texas and I found the South Coast Sailing Adventures and they said, absolutely, we have a catamaran and they were priced very well. And the, and you could just come from this state to this state and you can do all of these courses. And it was, it was really simple. The instruction has been excellent. And I have not been paid by South Coast Sailing Adventures to do this series on these sailing lessons and they didn't know that I was gonna do YouTube when I got here, but I asked them and they were so sweet about it. We have kind of requested to have Craig be an, our instructor the entire time because we really like Craig. I don't know if all the instructors are quite as good as Craig, uh, but I've really enjoyed our time with South Coast Sailing Adventures. Day two on a catamaran. It is our last day of sailing, which is kind of sad but I really miss my kids, so it's kind of good too. And whose responsibility is it to keep an eye out for other uh, 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 issues? Everybody. Oh, everybody, absolutely. <laughs> because when I look at lines on a sailboat now, I know what they're all for. And also I remember the first time that we went out um, in the summer, how there was just so many new words and I felt like it was a new language. And now I'm using those words myself. And I'm like, I kind of know how to sail now. I realize I have a lot more practice to do before 
I would feel comfortable like really taking out a sailboat of our own, but I'm pretty proud of myself. This is top speed. We're gonna see the world at five miles an hour. And I'm gonna throw it over the cliff. When they lasso the cleats, it's like they're being real Texas cowboys lassoing. Uh -huh. What's really crazy is I'm like, oh, this is all coming to an end, time to go back home. But there is no home. We're not going home. Like, it's just, here it is, the beginning of our adventure. And we headed back to the school to take our final test. We passed! We're done with all of our ASA classes that we wanted to take. If you want to see how we're going to put all of these ASA classes to use, please like, subscribe, and comment down below.